Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not To Comic Book. This week is show, we're talking about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Sweet Home Season 2, Episode 7. Great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. The penultimate episode of the season. I should also talk about the fact is, I have gone the entire season not talking about how meaty these episodes are. This one in particular is the longest one, it's like an hour and 20 minutes, not including credits. That's, that's, that is is including credits and stuff but i want to say like the longest episodes last season was like one in ten because they were both like maybe an hour 15 but everything else was like 50 or under typically speaking so and and typically that would be without that's with credits as well but regardless so it's just interesting how beefy the season was um in in total i want to say maybe two might have been the shortest episode if i remember correctly but everything else has been like an hour plus i think but either way Regardless of all that, first and foremost, let's start off with the whole situation with picking up where... Well, no, actually, let's start from the very, very beginning where we pick up with Yi Kiong last season when she was about to kill her baby because she was stuck between I gave birth to a monster, but also maybe I'm doing the world a service by getting rid of a monster in this world. And also I'm conflicted because you are my child, regardless of you being a monster. Can I really live with the decision I'm about to make? The fact is I'm even in this position where I'm even considering it. But lo and behold, who walks up? Hugh and I was like, what? I was like, so no one got you out. You just got out on your own, which also it's like, that means you've been out the entire time. Because we, have, once again, we have no idea how long ago the situation is between Eon Yu and um, Chief G's husband. We have no idea how long ago that was. But it's like, this is, and obviously this is when Yi Kion gave birth. So he got free pretty immediately then. Um, maybe because like the last time we see him, the door is coming down on him and, but it did seem like he was moving. So either he just managed to bust out of there, something else busted him out, or it could just be a situation of basically because of the door, it cracked it enough that he was able to kind of wiggle himself free. But like he escaped almost immediately. I thought it would be, take some time for someone to find you. It's like, no, you got out almost immediately. Cause it's like that. Cause at best he was frozen in stone like that for what a couple hours because it was nighttime when Yi on fell into the water and by the time she comes up and she's conscious again with her baby it's like morning or like noon so it's like he was only stuck in there for like a couple hours at best maybe i don't know but either way so what also surprised me was Yi on walked away she just, she felt like, right, just leaving the baby behind. I couldn't, I can't kill you, but I also can't be around you. So it actually ended up being Hyun, which I was like, that's interesting. Because last episode, I was like, is that why Yi Kion's daughter is looking after, like, looking for Hyun? Because I was like, do you look at him? Do you think he's your father? Because I doubt Yi Kion has really talked about your actual father, Song Wan. But I was like, does she think he's her father? Or, or is it just a kindred spirit thing of you're, you're a new human, you're a special victim, and so am I? But yeah, she really did gravitate to him like a father because he kind of was. He basically looked after her. And it's, it is kind of sad that Hyun had a much better relationship with her than Yi Kiong because Hyun had a lot less to overcome, whereas Yi Kiong had a lot to think about. It's like, right, you're my daughter. She She's even starting to think, like, what? Because for her, it's like the main reason why I came back is I had to know why you ended up the way you did. Was it just that or. Was it the fact is that I, my desires, whereas a desire, people's desires get turned against them and turned into monsters. It's like, did my own desires turn my child into a monster? Because, because we see that those pictures, um, that Yi Kiong was seeing that, um, her daughter was drawing. I think it's meant to be like a, a family picture is kind of what's supposed to represent. But I think that's the desires that Yi Kiong was talking about. She was so, cause she found out she was pregnant before she obviously found about what happened to Song Wan, but because she went looking for him after finding out she was pregnant and Eon Hyo kicked her out uh, of the apartment building and she used that as an opportunity to go look for him, but her desire to be together as a family, like, hey, find you, Song Wan, and then with you, I guess maybe that's also why at that moment, uh, like the whole thing with the baby happened the moment she saw uh, Song Wan. You know, it's, it took all this time for that to really click in my head because Dr. Lim was hoping like, hey, Sung Wan 
might have a reaction because he didn't know she was pregnant at the time. So it never crossed his mind that, hey, maybe the baby, her her reaction would do something to the baby. So I'm sure that's where a lot of that guilt trickles from because like that moment is what set everything in motion because everything was fine until she saw song one and then like it just um, i mean maybe those desires were already getting to the baby regardless i mean because it's like your children are kind of like a manifestation of your desires to have a family and what the future is you would want built for them and what life you want for them but eventually Yikion came back and for her she was actually happy to see her daughter was normal she like measures her to see because it's like right you've grown so much in a year so she's constantly checking her height but it's like every time I was happy to see that you were just a normal girl and I let it slip my mind what you were until that situation is when they got killed when she got killed like that's why I almost go like did they not even know what she was at the time when they shot her for the arrows and then they're like, oh, she's going, she's, she must be a monster. Cause it feels like they purposely went there cause they knew she was one. So I don't know if they had, were watching Hyun and her or Yi Kyung and her and noticed that she was a monster. So cause it didn't look like they were going there for supplies. It looks like they went out of the way to go after her. So, but when it's all said and done, we saw she grew older and she, killed them and then at that moment it's like Yi Kyung had to like can no longer deny like my daughter's a monster and for her it's just that was just too much and that's when she started kind of treating her bad like we finally get at the time I didn't get the whole like why are you cutting her arm thing but she cuts her arm and puts some something on it like I guess some dye or anything like that so I guess that when the wound closed up it would never perfectly heal because there's still stuff in the wound to kind of keep it from fully fully closing so that because a scar like that should disappear but I guess if it's embedded well because that's hard to say because we even see, like, let's not forget Song Wook's burns on his body. He's had those for years, ever since he was a little kid. The moment uh, Woo Myung, like, possessed his body, those went away. But I guess it's like by putting something in the wound, you completely stop it from completely closing. Because it's like something in it just kind of affects the wound. I guess this, the wound's in a perpetual state of being infected, so it's constantly, like, healing but not healing. So it just, it was meant to be a scar so that she wrote... Or... Cause I think it's meant to be a scar, but maybe it was almost supposed to be intentionally be like almost like a tattoo. Maybe that's how Yiki Yong was treating it. But it's like, because even Hyun was like, do you have to go that far? And she's like, I do, because this way I don't want her to ever forget that she's human. And she even realizes it later on. She even confesses she wanted her daughter to be like Hyun. She saw how Hyun is the only person who's really held on to his humanity upon becoming a monster. No one else, not even Wu Myung, because he abandons the human side of things. Like, Hyun is the only one who's managed, managed to keep his conscience and kind of just be himself. And so she was so desperate. She could never accept her daughter as she was and just work with her, like, rather than try to be with... Because in her own way, it's like, I don't know whether I am trying to protect the world from you or protect you from the world. Or maybe at the end of the day, everything I'm doing is just simply because I want to be with you without any complications, without people coming after you for finding out what you are. Are you doing something to me by accident? She's the one that made her start wearing the... Uh, the mittens would like tie her hands and everything. You also get the context of like, oh, it's a pen, like a pencil or something she used to stab Yi Kyung's eye. You know, it seemed like it damaged it, sure, but I think enough time has passed that it healed. But yeah, she ended up, and it's sad too because she stayed behind with the boat burning. Because for her, it's like I messed everything up. I deserve to die. Like I, my daughter's better off without me. I failed as a mother. It's just. She made a lot of wrong decisions and it's just like, it's a lot. It's a complicated circumstance, but it's still the thing of that's your daughter. Why did you treat her this way? And it's just, in her own way, she was trying to do what was best. But it's also because she had her regrets. It's like, do I, did I wish that you were gone? Yes. Did I wish you, you weren't what you were, but you are. So that there was like, there sadly is like love and hate. Like at the end of the day, she loves her daughter, but there's so many asterisks beside that that complicates it. It's a very complicated circumstance. And I'm, I'm sure from her daughter's perspective, it's like, why couldn't you just love me for me? You never accepted me. I, I read your thoughts. I know what you think about me. I know how you feel. I see the discontent in your eyes. Maybe at one point in time, it wasn't there when I was younger. But the moment you saw that monster side of me, it changed everything. Because at least when she saw her as a baby, and I thought, I knew it wasn't being crazy. Like, the rest of the body was, like, monstrified, but there was, like, one portion of the face that looked human. And she kind of deluded or something. Like, no, no, you're not a monster because you were just a normal girl until her monster side revealed itself again. And so we cut back to present day, 
and she pushes Eon Yu down the hole and Hyun rescues her. But he tries to walk away and she's like, why? Like, after all this time, are you just going to walk away not say anything? You saved me. It's like, yeah, I did back then. I just happened to be in the area. That's the only reason why I saved you is because I knew you. Because for him, it's like, I think for him, it's, this will never work out. There'll never be a place fully for monsters and humans. Like, I can't go with you. It's, it's going to be harder to walk away from you. That's why I kept my distance, but you still watch enough to keep an eye on her because you still miss that connection. Um, it's so interesting because I, I wonder, did they shift that for the show? Having, once again, not read a lot of the comment, but it definitely feels like they were setting up a G like, like it might be a thing that Hyun likes Jisoo, but obviously in the show they go down the route of Jisoo and Jaehyun. Still might go down that right route in a comment, but I don't see like Eon Yu and him being a thing. I just wouldn't assume that. But I wonder, do they shift that for the show? Like maybe it's like maybe that's a Jisoo and him thing. Like a lot of the role that she's playing is kind of what Jisoo would play in the role of the show. Um, I mean, in the on uh, the webtoon, or maybe they're just shifting Eon Yu's character to be that way. I mean, like she was the first person, like outside of the security guard, like amongst the residents, she was the first person he interacted with, and she was there, and she did in a way save his life. So I did. She said what she said, which was kind of horrible, but she has always been that like weird, per like thing in his life where it's like, because she still also he still doesn't know the promise that they kept. Like he remembers everything, but she kept that promise to herself so we as the audience and her are the only ones who know about that i think she said that I, I think it's there's a uh an element of she was hoping it was her brother but i think she is happy to know it's hewn because of that promise they made so knowing that he's still out there still alive because she was even even the guy who shows up is she was hewing off because she would try to kind of oh oh not old yellow her um god because that's not the uh the whole thing of, oh, like, go away, stay away from me, or I'll hurt you. Doing everything he can to, like, scare her off, but she doesn't scare easy. But he, the guy that, um, with a shotgun shows up and shoes Hyun and Yi Kyung's daughter off. But for Eon uh, Yu, it's like, well, she's like, thank God he's still alive, holding strong. That he hasn't, like, she sees it in his face, it's like, in his eyes, it's like, I see you're just trying to push me away from my own sake, but I see that you're still you. You're still the same person you've always been. You've never, like, given up on that human side of yourself. You continue to still be human, even though the last words we heard him say was in episode three when he's like, yes, I am a monster. Which, to be fair, it's like being a monster doesn't define you to be one thing, which we'll get to in a little bit later on. But Yi Kion's daughter and Hyun have this conversation where it's like, why did you do that? And it's like, well, because I don't like her. Because every time she's involved, you would always run off and leave me behind. And she's like, I was so curious about humans. I thought humans were going to be interesting because my mom's human and I want to learn more about them. But all I've ever run into is resentment from both my mom as well as other people. And she's like, my friends get hurt. So I'm assuming like other monsters like get hurt because of, because of what they are and just like that's the way humans are so she's definitely on the anti-human bandwagon which Hune isn't to be fair she doesn't know all about Hune and what he's going through she's always been like this Hune hasn't always been that way he knows and remembers what it was like to be human um whereas Yi Kyung's daughter has only ever known all of this, has only known being herself, no one else, whereas all these other monsters too, they, they have forgotten because it's so buried deep down, but we've seen through Hyun's eyes, like, other monsters are the same way, the human is still in there somewhere. But for her, it's like, I just came here to tell you that, like, I'm going to make sure you feel the pain I did, which is so ironic because she doesn't know about Hyun all that he's been through. The, like, you're acting like he doesn't know the pain that you know. He does. But I think for her, it's like, I want to make sure you lose all your connection so you have nothing left. You'll be all alone, which is, ironically enough, something Wu Myung wanted. Like, she's coming at it from a selfish standpoint, whereas, like, Wu Myung was kind of in the same way, boat of, like, I want us to be together, so I'm going to destroy everything so you have nothing left. It's just, it is kind of ironic that she would go down that route and still doesn't mean she won't link up with Yu, Yu Myung, uh, Wu Myung eventually because they, she's lost enough just to end up kind of swept up in his influence. I could definitely see that, but 
Hewn finding out about, like, the boat being on fire, like, he runs back to try and save her. And the little baby monster tries to save her, too. He's not strong enough, but he's pushing stuff. He's rolling around the fire because he got caught on fire and he tried to go into the water and, like, stop, drop, and roll. So I think he's trying to roll his body all over it, but it's not helping. And so when Hewn shows up, she's passed out. He grabs her and grabs the little dude. And Yi Kiong's just thinking, like, I don't deserve to be alive. Like, I should, maybe this is what I deserve. But Hyun says the line of, just because, sure, so even if she is a monster, is that so bad? These monsters have feelings too. They remember faces because so many people treat it as like the monsters don't. And it's like shows her the little, like this thing, it, it recognizes you as family. It tried to protect you. So, you know, because everyone lumps all monsters into the same boat. They try to treat him as different. I mean, let's not even get it twisted. For a good chunk of season one, Hune was kind of ostracized because of what he is. And, you know, now they're making exceptions. Well, well you're, you're more human than others. So it's like, Yi 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 was too busy trying to make hit her daughter like Hune. Once again, they're two different experiences. Hune became a monster, but he remembers what it's like to be human. So, but even as a monster, he still holds on to everything as well. Your daughter can be the same way. She's, she can be a, a good kid, but you never really gave her a chance to because you were so afraid of the monster and you held so much resentment against her as well as yourself for giving birth to a monster into this world. So, it, it's, it's a whole bunch of conflicted feelings and Yi Kiyong passes out. So, back to Eon Yu. She goes back with a uh, shotgun dude. They find the girl and Chan Siong, uh, Chan Yeong pass out because it looks like he's got, uh, he's got foam coming out of his mouth. Because it turns out that girl eats poisonous mushrooms. It allows, I guess that's why she. Well, I think she's naturally a little off, but she eats them just to kind of hallucinate. But she's got in a resistance to it because I guess maybe she eats them so often but she gave him too much and it was like poisonous to him so it's kind of crazy because she's like a little like hey wake up but she's also laughing because she's like tripping at the same time it's wild and Eon you kind of has no one to blame you're the one that left him behind and it's like oh he should have been fine it's like maybe you shouldn't have left him in the care of them to be fair she thought she was leaving in the care of both and didn't realize uh this girl would uh what's her name Hani would like go a little nuts and make him drink something that or eat something that would be uh detrimental in that regard luckily home dude brought back some antidotes for him to chew on so what i thought was so interesting is that guy has a perspective of hey you guys aren't as safe as you are and even you've only gotten lucky to survive this like that's why i'm like what makes you think you're such hot shit considering like well they've they've made it this far to so far but for him it's like yeah that's only because you've been lucky i guess it's like the difference is you've been safe behind your little stadium and it's worked out to your benefit but we've been out here surviving on our own so we're a little more cut out for this than you you folks are but it's just like why he has such a nihilistic perspective on i mean i guess this world will bring out the nihilism in everyone but he's like yeah you guys just getting by like you've or maybe you're ignorant to everything that's kind of going on how everything's kind of changed to be fair a lot of the civilians that are living in the stadium haven't been out in a very long time and even the soldiers haven't quite grasped the situation which this episode kind of links into some of those changes i think that guy might have been talking about or changes that are kind of happening amongst the monsters which we'll get to when we talk about the other side of this episode but Hyun shows up with Yi Kyung because he needs to take her somewhere to get like you know patched up, and Eon Yu ends up hugging him, and he's like, "Right, I like, help me please. Like I just I didn't. This is the only place I knew where to go." And while they're trying to get her help, Home Dude ends up shooting Hyun because he's like, "He's a monster. I told you to stay away from monsters. You're dangerous because you're around monsters. Like people should just be around other people." And Eon Yu holds a knife to Hani's neck, being like, right, if you're going to be like that, what makes you so certain? Like, what are you going to do when you eventually become a monster? Are you going to, like, kill yourself? Or what about her? Will you do what it needs to be done? Or do I, if I kill her right now, would I be kind of showing her mercy, giving you mercy where you won't have to kill her later on? Because it is that thing of you're so quick to demonize monsters and kind of lump them all in the same group, even though humans coming here asking for help, like, it doesn't. It doesn't matter to you. Just very anti. I get it. Like everyone's been through something. So not everyone's going to have a very positive notion when it comes to monsters. Like very, very rare people would. 
but he is kind of a rare case. And also, not all monsters are built the same. Yes, there are some that are aggro, but that's because they've lost themselves. There are others who are not aggro, you know. But a lot of people have that very like anti-monster stance, and this guy is one of them. So, but Honey ends up taking the knife and putting it to Eon Yu's neck. And I guess maybe the reason why she didn't do it is because, well, I'm not a murderer, so there's that. Or maybe she also did it because she knew Chan Young wouldn't appreciate that. So she's like, right, we didn't get we didn't get together in this life, but maybe we'll meet in the next life. But if we do, don't bring her along. So they and I'm assuming they're gonna go back to the shelter to help her out, which is gonna be awkward for Eon Yu. I mean, there are going to be some familiar faces there who will recognize him. I mean, not Eon Yu, but uh, Hyun. There's going to be people who are going to recognize him there, if, depending on how things play out the shelter, because it's like, well, obviously, Seong, uh, Ying, Yong, and Miss Ha are like the last of the group, so they would recognize him, but no one else would like know Hyun off the top of their head like that. So it might be a situation if he probably would try and just wait outside while they helped her out. I mean, granted, everything is kind of going haywire at the shelter, but we'll get to that soon enough. Before we kind of shift over to that situation, we do have, speaking of the shelter, we do have uh, Sergeant Kim was going to leave and go on a solo mission to try and get young Siok, but the others went along, especially Home Dude, who's kind of been the hard-ass the entire time, Seon Jin. He goes alone too because for him it's like I do, if something happens to you, uh, Sergeant or Young Siak, while I'm still here, I I just end up being crazy and I couldn't help anyone because Kim's point was you would have to lead the charge like if something happens to me while we're going to go rescue him. But the entire the, some of the platoon because a lot of the platoon is staying, but only like was it five or six of them in total. And also Dr. Lim because he's got his own, which obviously he had to be such an asshole because he's like, oh, look at this. Isn't this, is this making anyone else cringe? Look at me. I'm getting these goosebumps. It's like, it, they were having such a beautiful, heartwarming, like family moment and you had to kind of shit all over it. Uh, but what was so interesting was Dr. Lim was carrying around that case. I'm like, well, we know that we never got the resolution to that vaccine conversation. He had hid them, but he was also saying like they didn't, weren't a foolproof thing. So maybe he kept, maybe he put the vaccines there by being like, oh, they're done when in actuality they never were. They were never going to be a surefire thing. So they, he was never like, they were never going to be the answer. So he hid them because by keeping it like, because no one would know they weren't the full, everyone would assume they'd be the solution, but by hiding them, you don't have to worry about anyone testing it and finding out and also hiding it kept you around and alive and allowed you to do what you wanted to do. So I was wondering if it had something to do with that. I was like, because we never really got an answer to that old vaccine thing. Like I said at the time in episode three, I'd assume he had hidden in the stadium because he knew exactly what the prime minister and the others were going to do, like destroying the place. Like he knew they were going to go scorch earth. So he's like, yeah, go ahead and destroy the stadiums because that's actually where they're hidden. But the suitcase actually ended up being empty because he makes this excuse like, oh, I got to take a dump. But he went to go take something. Because he knew it was back there. Like, it's a part of, like, a nest or something. He broke off a piece of it. So, I guess it's, like, maybe he knew that was there, like, over a year ago. Maybe it was back when uh, people could go on patrol, like, before the soldiers made it so that only they went on patrol expeditions. Maybe that's when he found out about it. But it's, like, there's no way you just, like, well... I guess arguably he took the suitcase because he was hoping to get back to the research facility and grab whatever might be there. And, but he ha maybe he did just randomly happen across, happen upon this thing he saw and he broke off a piece of it. And they end up getting attacked by monsters. But, and luckily they got away, but he brought it to their attention. He's like, Did you notice something about that encounter? And it's like, Well, what, what was different? They were working together. Typically, monsters don't. In fact, they usually would go at each other's throat. Typically, they don't always fight, but they just kind of do their own thing. Working together like that isn't. If we're all heading in the same direction, sure, but it almost felt like, no, they set a trap for us and they came after us. It's like, yeah, the monsters are changing, they're evolving, things aren't like things, I mean, just like anything in nature, things evolved and adapt to their new circumstances and so are these things. So I guess it's a little more tilting more towards like Planet of the, Planet of the Apes type of situation when it comes to the monsters. It seems like that might be the evolutionary path they're kind of going down now. But uh, they get to the facility, and Seo Jin was with the others and looking for uh, Young 
Seahawk, which they haven't seen hide nor hair of him. So it's like, it does seem like it was a trap because I'm like, like he didn't try to reach out to you. You only heard the signal, which said SOS. Like it just, like I said, that could have just been set on a loop or something. But I'm like, it felt too suspicious. Like that was too, someone's trying to draw you in. But why? So many questions unanswered on that front. But the groups are separated and... Dr. Lim ends up going to his research facility and, well, for one, they find so many, like, people dead and obviously I think maybe even some monsters too. I think it's a byproduct of Wu Myung, like, his breakout at the end of episode three. Well, near the end of episode three, maybe that's what that's correlated to because there's a lot of damage to the facility. He... Because he wasn't there at the time because when the... Well, because also, didn't they blow that place up? There might be different facilities. Maybe maybe I'm correlating those as the same facilities, but they're not the same facilities where... where I think it is, but isn't that where... Well, it's probably... No, I think it might have been a different facility. Where, yeah, where the Prime Minister and them were at, that was a different facility. So, this is Dr. Lim's first time back to the research facility since... The, the research section, at the very least, since he was probably taken to visit the... Uh, taken to go see the prime minister in episode three that was probably the last time he'd been down so he hadn't in all this year time seen that like what happened like all that time ago when Wu Myung was like breaking everyone out and destroying the place but then they end up finding like these giant eggs so it seems like very reminiscent of the Miss M situation of how she kind of turned into like that baby that eventually hatched and it was kind of like a new her um, it seems like a similar thing is happening here where like they're, they're evolving. They're kind of putting themselves in cocoons and coming out a little different. I mean, we don't know what the end result is going to be. Dr. Lim wants to touch it, but Kim keeps him from doing it. It's like, don't do that. Like, I'm not going to put my men in danger just for your own curiosity. But he's like, right, what am I supposed to just watch it from the sidelines? So it's like, fine, do whatever you want to do. Get whatever you need to get without causing too much of a trouble and meet us back at the vehicles. Uh, obviously you can't trust that lunatic on his own. Who knows what the hell he's going to get into. Cause it's like, what did you actually come here for? It's not like you knew this was waiting for you. Cause even you were surprised when you got here. So what were you planning? Like, is this where the vaccines were all the time? Cause he did promise like, Oh, you're going to let me go out. I will help you, uh, control. I can't cure you of your monsterization, but I can allow you to control it. So maybe the vaccine can help in that regard, but not fully cure you but it can help control the monsterization so that you have better control of it i don't know because what else would you be coming here for not unless he's going to try and get some more samples from some of the monsters i don't know but on the other side of things sion jin's group uh they get attacked and their buddy what was it usiak ends up getting god and we see this because at one point he's pulling on his arm and then it kind of comes off and then some stuff oozes down. You think it is just blood. But as they're running away, the it ooze starts moving. And I'm like, isn't that Wu Myung? I'm like, why, why aren't you in a body? So what happened to, so um, what happened to Song Wook's body then? Once again, it's been a year, so a lot's happened. But I'm like, I, may, I was like, maybe next episode we'll get some explanation for what the hell happened to you. I'm like, why are you back here then? Like, what happened after you kind of, quote-unquote, like, petrified um, Hyun? Maybe maybe we'll find out Hyun also attacked him and did the same thing as he did to the body in Season 1's finale. He burned it, so, like, maybe he just scuttled off afterwards. And maybe he's just been stuck here because maybe there's no body good enough in good enough condition. Like I said, it seems like he... I guess maybe the bot... You would assume, like, as long as the body... Even if the body's dead, it seems like he is still resurrected inside of it. Uh, obviously he aims more so it seems like for people who are in the process of dying like Song Wook was in the process of dying when he got possessed but I don't know it's because it's like why are you out and about in like a not like in your 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 liquidy form that doesn't make any sense unless your body's your physical body's gone so maybe he's just been trapped here the entire time unable to fully escape because he can't really hot jump into any body like it could be a thing of Hume, like I said, Hume definitely got out a lot quicker than I thought he would, and maybe he got out a lot quicker than Wu Myung was expecting, and that's why he doesn't have a body right now. I have no idea, but it seems because I was under, I was thinking like, there's no way it's going to end up being Yi Kyung's daughter that ends up attacking them, but it's like, no, it's Wu Myung, but just not in a body. Like, I don't know what to make of that. So 
we'll see what happens on that front. You're also kind of scared because you're like, that's not going to end well for that group. So not unless everyone ends up dead except for Sergeant Kim and he ends up being the new body going forward. Definitely see that being a strong possibility. Not unless it ends up being Dr. Lim because I don't know where the hell that's going to go. But while the hell all those shenanigans are happening, back at the shelter itself, um, we had this group gathering because, like, what was, it was, um, Jung Yi Seo, that's, uh, Chief G's daughter, her, her buddy, what was it, um, what was her, was her name, like, Seong, it's, it's something, why, I can't remember her name, but her friend that likes the, the, uh, the priest, her, Miss Han, and the two, like, dudes we've come to, like, see from time to time, they all gathered around, just start drinking and stuff. Um, what was interesting though is Yi Seol's buddy. It turns out she's actually she says like, "Oh, I actually like that the world went to ruin because we're all equal now." She's like, "I because I was rich." And the guy's like, "There's no way if you were rich, you wouldn't be talking like that." But it's, I, I guess it is that thing of the everyone's on the same whether you're rich or poor. Like we're all we are all in the same situation. We are even. We're like. Nothing of like everyone kind of was on the same playing field when it comes to you know because being rich doesn't benefit you in this world. So she probably is being serious when she says like she seems always a little off, but maybe it is like maybe she's like eccentric because she was rich or whatever. But like I think there probably is sincerity in the whole aspect of oh yeah, I'm glad the world ended the way it did because we are all equal. It kind of brought us all together where it's like class and. Um, stuff like that separated us. It, we're, none of that matters now because it's just humans surviving. Humans versus monsters. Still ended up walking away not knowing much about the priest. He was just like, yeah, basically I have no life to go back to because my life hadn't changed too much from the world ending to what it was before. So there's not too much to lament on what was before. Because they were having this whole conversation about would you prefer being a monster because you get to no longer be sick and you be fine. But it's like, yeah, but one of the guys was like, I prefer being able to kind of be around each other and not be so alone. So I don't want to become a monster. So that ended up being a conversation. Uh, but Yi Seo ends up trying, dancing with her friend just to kind of lighten the mood because it's like, yeah, this conversation has been getting really dark and depressing. Um, I also love Yi Seo's conversation with young because he was acting like such a little shit because her friend was like oh like you know you know do you think they'll let us go one day she was talking i think to miss han at the time about like oh do you think they'll let us go like won't we'll be able to go back home but he was like no we're not going back home we're gonna become monsters and they're gonna kill us yada 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 acting like an asshole right understand you're frustrated you're pissed because everything you've been through you've, you're resentful but um yisio ends up kind of having this conversation where she says when you're a kid, you don't recognize that when people, when adults are mad at you, they're mad at you for a reason because whatever it is, is most likely your fault. Yes, adults don't have all the answers sometimes, but sometimes it is just to think of, yeah, you have your stupid kid brain and you think you know it all. And it's like, yeah, go like be with your mom. And he's like, she's not my mom. And it hits him again. It's like, you brat. You think just because you only have one mom in life, you can have two or three. Because it's also you're being ungrateful that this woman who's done nothing but try to take care of you and you've been so resentful for her. You're talking about a woman who, she has to know that her, um, because yeah, she was there when, he was there when they buried her daughter, like, you're not the only one that's lost someone. She lost a child too. And you, what, I mean, but that's the thing. Everyone's like that. Everyone gets so caught up in what they've lost. They never think about what someone else is kind of going through. In your particular case, you're so focused on what you lost. Don't forget, she also lost a child as well. All you've had is each other for this past year, but you're so angry. Understandably, but it's like you're lashing out at the wrong person who... She never tried to like take the place as your mother. She just tried to be there for you. And had she not been there for you, she tries to do right by you. And when you do, you kind of spit in her face and slap slap her hand away when she tried to reach out to you. So you can tell it does bother him. Like what Yi Seol said really struck a chord with him because you see him looking at the look on Miss Han's face. Like she's looking around for him because she was nervous and kind of concerned. Like, oh, I wonder where is he? He's got to be here somewhere, but I hope, hope he's okay. And I think maybe, just maybe, he won't be as much of an asshole going for that if he ends up surviving this season. We'll see. But, um, yeah, everyone's on high alert because 
home dude who's into Yeezy all ends up over like he ends up hearing uh, whatever it is Doc, uh, Chief G has hidden away and the noise is he hears a monster even in the pipe so it's like oh my god there's a monster here like alarms start going off because all the communication starts going on the fritz and all the signal like as, obviously as the phones do they recognize a monster nearby and even all these plugged in phones end up activating too so it's like there's a monster here talk I think immediately assumes it's all about him he's like oh this talk about monsters it's most likely me but it doesn't quite register in that regard because it never registered like that for Hune. Like, they would always pick up all their monsters. It doesn't pick you up. At least I don't... It, it doesn't work like that. It usually registers with... I think... N we don't know what it, how it registers Hune now. Post, like, really giving into his monsters. But he's still human enough that I don't know if it would register him. Typically. that That is unclear at this point in the story. I should actually circle back a little bit because it was something I wanted to make sure I covered this. Back to Yeong, him being like, my mom died. That's interesting because I, this depends on if they're keeping this closer to the webtoon or not. But he could just be talking in general like, hey, his mom died before it all went down. Or, because I never really thought about it at the time. I just assumed like watching season one, like, oh, maybe he just, he had, a, his mom was just not in the picture. Either she died or she would just, um... His dad would just establish as a single dad. Well, in the webtoon, uh, interestingly enough, once again, you read a little, uh, re reading a little further ahead, I, I um, uh, found this out, but they were with their dad because they snuck off to see him. I'm assuming like her, their parents are divorced, and him and Seung went to see their dad without even telling their mom. So even the, obviously in the story in the webtoon, they're still unsure whether or not she died or not. But it's interesting to know, like either he's saying like, oh, she died because. Well, she's obviously gone, or she died even before this all went down, and the only person. So they might have changed it so that their mom was already dead. Whereas in the webtoon, they're unclear whether or not their mom died. So that that's just kind of interesting. Just a little detail. Like I, I, I was thinking about that before I started pressing, before I press record, and before I strayed too far away, I wanted to kind of circle back to that. Just something I know was a little different between the TV show and the webtoon. But either way, getting back to it, what I thought was interesting too is. Chief G was kind of getting a little nervous with everything going on. So she's like, right, you're the only person I can trust. I'm ass assuming she told Yi CEO everything, maybe, whatever, whatever, or whoever it is that she has hidden. And because it's like, right, your family and whoever this is is most likely family too. So you need to help me because she actually, Yi CEO was trying to help out because she's like, right, I got to actually do my part. I've got to actually honor my mom just because of what, how their interaction was last episode. Because she'd even said like, oh, me and my mom got in an argument, but it seemed like they were better after that conversation, which we never got to see what that conversation actually entailed. But when everything was going down, they were gathering everyone up into one single room. We do see Yi CEO kind of slip away just because her mom was brought into the room. She kind of gives her a look like, okay. And so Yi CEO goes off on her own, I guess, to monitor this situation. But yeah, the soldiers gather everyone around and it's like, right, this is what's happening. And they all like slash themselves to see like, hey, we are not monsters. Like you're all going to have to do what you can fight. We're not going to be able to protect you. We're all going to have to fight basically for our own lives. It's almost like everyone's... I don't, it felt like it could have been interpreted as like a, oh, you have to look out for yourself in this particular situation because no one's above monsterization at this moment. We don't know where the monster is, so we kind of all have to look out for each other, but also like look out for your own self when it comes to your, your life. But obviously, Chief G was kind of like, oh, uh, why are you just standing behind your man and force his talk to cut himself, which he does, and he bleeds? We know he's, he's infected. But the others don't. Luckily, the power just maybe it just worked out in his favor. Went out, and luckily, no one saw his wound heal. Chief G immediately goes and tries to check on things and realizes like whoever she had hidden, I think, because she looks down and I guess they got out or whoever they are got out, and maybe they ended up attacking the power system or supply. Maybe that might have been Yi all doing that. I have no idea. But that look on Chief G's face means like, oh, things didn't go according to plan. In fact, things are fucked, extremely fucked. So, all the while this chaos is going down, there is a problem going on. But like Sergeant Takis 
so bad, busy battling his monster. It's like, right, go ahead and confess to them. You know, here you are running away again. And the monster's showing him, like, right, here's a hallway of dead people. You're responsible. Here's your child calling out for your name. And it's like, oh, help me, dad, written on the wall or whatever. And it's like your hands are covered in blood. It's like, here you are. Go ahead, give it to your monster. Let everyone know. If you really want to be all about this, then reveal yourself as the monster and let them know, like, oh, there is a monster here. So... But one of the soldiers comes over to him. It's like, sir, we have a problem. Now, what that entails, I don't know. But this last shot of the episode shows Tok's eyes going black. And he's looking in a mirror. So, home dude most likely recognized that. So, Tok might be the one that's the ultimate end of this place. This shelter might not be here at the end of this episode. I mean, at the end of the next episode. Which is going to be the season finale. So, how this all plays out, where this goes, I'm not quite sure. I could definitely see this not having a happy ending. There's going to be probably a lot of sadness and uh, all around. I have I have no idea how it's all going to play out, but I'm excited to find out where the season finale takes us with all of this. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.